Here we are live. Awesome. Okay, Good we life. are live. Yay. Welcome Good. to Divine Farmer Health this Thursday morning. We are delighted that you're here. This is Chris McKee, Certified Nutritionist, and I have a special guest with us today. We're delighted to have Dally with us, and he's coming from Toronto, right, um, north of us. And so Dolly is a acupuncturist as well, and also a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. So very similar to Jimmy and his background. And we have a really important topic today. I, I think this is one of one of the most important things when I'm working with clients. These are the types of questions I ask them because so much of the time we want a quick fix, like we want to go to the doctor and get our pill, right? We want to go to the nutritionist and get our vitamin or whatever. But there are lifestyle factors that are so important for your health. So, Dali, were you before we dive into the topic today? I think it'd be really interesting to hear your journey because you're from Serbia. You're in Canada and you are an acupuncturist and a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. So share with us a little bit on that journey of how you ended up where you are. Thanks, Chris. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say that pleasure is mine to be on your show and Jimmy's show. And uh, I'm happy to share some knowledge uh, that I gathered over the years with, uh, with our audi audience. So my journey into medicine, uh, believe it or not, started when I was even... 14. Uh, we have different school system back in the in the Serbia and that part of the world, because you start. I started medical school when it and that was a, like a high school. Hmm. So I start to uh, program for physiotherapist. So I was starting to read about anatomy, physiology, biology. Um, when I was basically 14. After that, so I continue and finished uh, college for physiotherapy. And so I was involved into the health uh, quite a while. And I pursued my career, worked in the hospitals back there as a physiotherapist, worked in the basketball club. And uh, in my 30s, I decided to <laughs> that I want more. <laughs> so I moved to Canada. All right. And when I came here, I came to Vancouver, and uh, it's a big Chinese community in Vancouver, lots of uh, good practitioners. And um, I was always interested in Chinese medicine, acupuncture, but I didn't have chance to study that back uh, in Europe. I had some books, you know, reading about that, but, you know, nobody could teach it. There's no schools. And uh, you can travel to China or travel somewhere here. And then uh, I finished, I started a three-year program in Vancouver. And uh, during three-year program to get license uh, for acupuncture, I fall in love in herbs. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, on the West, when we say Chinese medicine, people usually think about acupuncture. But basically in China, it, it's more herbs, yeah. Uh, in my opinion, yeah. And, uh, but then you go deeper. It's not just acupuncture, herbs, or some other modalities, but that's basically, uh, it's a lifestyle, yeah. Which, that's why we're here, we're gonna talk a little bit about food, yeah. Yeah. So, and here I am now, um, finished five year program in Vancouver, uh, worked one year in, uh, live one year in Argentina, Buenos Aires, just had some experience with my family there. Came back here again in Canada, and uh, uh, Nata and I opened the clinic, I think, six years ago. And we are slowly growing every year. And uh, yeah, so that's our story. And your wife's name is Natia? Uh, Natasha. Natasha. Oh, yeah. that's my granddaughter's name. I love it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So Natasha is a holistic nutritionist. And so you have a, a great, well-rounded practice there. Yes. And we'll share with the um, viewers a little bit more about your what you offer uh, before we close today. So tell us what is your topic today? Okay. So my topic is uh, something related to the lifestyle, food, but I won't talk about what should you eat, when should you eat and all that stuff. I want to talk about where are you while you are eating, okay? I know no, people will say, you know, 
I'm sitting on the chair. I know physically you're sitting on the chair, hopefully. <laughs> but where are you here, you know? Because, um, you know, I grew up watching movies and I like those American movies that portrayed America in the 50s. And it was all about family. And almost in every movie you would see family sitting, you know, having dinner and talking and, you know, there was no TVs beside, there was no iPads, there's nothing there. So uh, what you eat is important, of course, but how you eat is as well is important. And uh, if you're eating while you're driving, if you're eating while you are on a meeting, Zoom or um, some other meeting, uh, if you're eating while you're watching something, that's, the physiology is different. So let me give you an example. If you, you're telling basically your brain, you are not eating, you're trying to solve some other problem. So if you're watching something that is very uh, sensational, for example, news are always sensational, you know, this is how many people die in airplanes in the other part of the world, you know, it's yeah. sensational. Always bad, bad news. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. something, I don't know, why is that important for us? But like, okay. Let's not comment that. Um, you are, you know, your mind is there. Your emotions are there. So you're telling your brain, listen, uh, I don't feel comfortable because there was a plane crash. So think about this. To digest, first, you need to chew. Then you need to chew <laughs> long enough because you want to secrete those amylase uh, first in the mouth. And then food goes down. In the stomach, stomach has functioned, you know, to basically slowly grind the food, but as well to secrete enzymes. And you want that strong, strong hydrochloric acid there to start breaking down proteins. Okay, why I'm telling this? If you are watching something sensational, your mind is there. So you're telling your body, okay, I don't have time now to rest and digest. I got to think about how to deal with this basically problem I have right now. So your brain is focused on what you're watching, what you're looking at. Um, you're in the sympathetic nervous system mode, which is fight or flight, basically not the parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. Exactly. Yeah. So what happens in the stomach when you're in what happens with in digestion in general when you're in the sympathetic nervous system mode what's what's not working well basically it's not optimal uh, your uh, digestive en enzymes won't be secreted as much as they should and that's why many people one of the reason okay this is one of the reason that's why many people will we have like uh, uh basically uh epidemic uh, of the indigestion you know, at least here where i see i can talk for for my clinic for toronto i would say 70 percent of the clients i see they have some digestive issues in my opinion that are pretty easy to fix oh yeah i would say definitely here in the u.s for sure if millions yeah. of people on antacids uh yes millions of people with ibs and you know yes. all that stuff so I don't think people touched on this a little bit because I don't think folks think about this when their brain is working on something else and they're trying to eat. What is that as far as the immune system uh, goes when that food is not properly digested? Because it's not going to be properly digested and it'll probably leave or may stay in the stomach, you know, too long. And then you get the acid reflux or it may digest and go down and it's not completely digested. Completely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so exactly. Talk a little bit on that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is a great question. So basically, you know, first we don't chew enough, so it's not break down properly. Then it's come to the stomach. And again, you know, you're not focused uh, on eating and you're not calm. And those, for example, proteins won't be break down completely into the start to break, be break down into the amino acids that goes into the guts. So the problem with, with the immune system, it's not problem, it's reality. With the immune system is uh, if we don't break down food into the, for example, proteins into the amino acids, our immune system see that as a threat. So that's why we have lots of you know people have 
uh, IBS. Uh, basically, it's inflammation. So very one of the very important thing here is beside what you eat, when you eat is as well how you eat. Uh, and uh, why people don't know about this? Well, nobody talks about this that much. <laughs> I no. think that's the reason. Yeah. We don't learn this in school. We don't learn, you know, in, in, in our families. And that's fine. That's why we're here to educate people if they want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I always encourage folks, you know, it's so sad to me that when you go out to dinner and you see a family sitting there and they're all on their phone. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I'll never forget this one restaurant that I saw. It was fabulous. On every little table, they had a box mm -hmm. and it says cell phone box. Uh -huh. please, please be present. Put your phone in the box. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. There was another uh coffee shop that I saw that had a sign out front that says, We do not have Wi-Fi. Pretend it's 1980. Talk to people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris, yeah. I believe there's going to be more and more of these places. Yeah. Uh I, so, yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell tell me what happens. So this is tied to the emotions, right? And to the feelings that you're having. Tell me what is happening on the opposite side. Let's say you sit down and have a family meal and there's no TVs on, there's no cell phones mm. on the table. Um, maybe you have some, you know, nice uh, quiet music playing in the background yeah. and you're engaging in conversation. What is happening then in the body? So uh, uh, before we go there, let's talk about this. So uh, in my opinion, adults, most of the adults, they shouldn't, uh, so we can agree, disagree. Okay. They shouldn't eat six times per day. Oh yeah. Uh, very, very making all, all okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, great. Uh -huh. So um, because uh, that tells me you know what kind of food they eat. So let's say I usually suggest two three meals per day. Three meals. I don't think adults should have more. So think about this. There's a uh, food in front of you. It took a while for the universe to to basically create that out of nothing. And somebody put so much effort to grow that, to take care of that, to bring it basically on your plate. But plus, you have to invest your time, money to get it. Right. So you have basically uh, food in front of you. And if you're not paying attention on that, you, you're not appreciating this. Appreciation is a nice emotion to have. And it's we should be remind ourselves to have this emotion <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> so uh, and uh, so we should appreciate first what we have. Uh, I'm joking with my clients in the clinic. I'm not joking. I'm serious. But like you know, I tell them when I give them herbs, I tell them talk to your herbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I talk it's to like talk herbs. to your plants, right? They say, used to say talk, talk to, to your plants. plants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they like the music there. So yeah. uh, and um, you know I'm. Sometimes I talk, sometimes I, but I talk in, inside, you know, when I grabbing the food from the fridge, oh, nice, look at you, <laughs> so beautiful. So yeah, I, I like to have those conversations. So seriously, like instead of uh, thinking about something, focus on what you have. So as we said, it takes lots of, lots of effort for the universe to give us, then you have to cook that. Because I recommend people to cook at home as much as possible. And uh, which is great. It's nice time to spend. It's very creative, could be. And then that's on your plate. And then you then you watch something else. It's <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, one more analogy I like to use with how our mind and emotion can as distract us from the present moment is like think about this. I, I use analogy of a laptop, and now they're more advanced, but back in the days. If you have all programs on your laptop open at the same time and they're running, it's the processing of the, everything's going to be slow and then laptop starts to warm up as well. So basically this happens with us as well. So less energy to run program, less energy basically to digest as well. So uh, what's happening opposite? Well, happening happens miracles. First, you have this emotion of appreciation. Then you can actually hear uh, people that you live with. 
even if you are alone, you can, you know, focus on the smell, focus on the color. Maybe you can think about it a little bit. Where is this food coming from? Maybe you can think about it, how you can improve uh, to cook maybe better, maybe something different. So all these, I'm, I'm not against the mind. Mind is good when you use the mind. Problem is when mind use you. <laughs> which That's is most point. of the time okay yeah, yeah so mind is great tool yeah but you have to use the mind otherwise it's uh, it's usually mess uh <laughs> so this happens while you sitting and if you have family basically you you talk it doesn't Amazing. have to be serious Amazing. conversation you know yeah, conversation yeah yeah maybe you talk maybe sometimes you don't talk but really like uh, just what to do nothing turn off the tv uh move the um, devices away and uh, we have two kids and it's not easy because it's this these devices are really really distracting us and they want to watch and eat and that's always uh nowadays it's a little bit less but before in one moment was very intense i want to watch and and you know just we have rules yeah you cannot watch that's it yeah. So, uh, yeah, that would be my suggestion. Think about this. You eat two, three times, two times a day. Just focus on that. And it's it's going to benefit you. You will chew more. You will give uh, uh, your body information. Okay, everything is fine. I can sit and I can start to have optimal start of the optimal digestion of this food and you know mm. uh, when that goes into the stomach appropriately and stomach starts to work uh, and when you finish that part don't worry about your intestines you don't worry about secreting bile you're not doing that body does it on its own but you have to give body these simple conditions so this starts does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I was just thinking when you said that, I was thinking when when you're present with even if like I'm the cook in the house, right? So when you're present with the food that you're preparing and like you said, being grateful and thankful, which I am that we get such great choices of organic food here. A lot of places don't have that. And you're cooking this and you're putting and I it's just me and my husband. So you know, I'm putting care into the meal, uh, you know, when I'm cooking it and it sometimes take, you know, depends on what I'm cooking, right. Uh, may take an hour to make dinner. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, so to take an hour to make dinner and then have somebody sit down and watch TV while they're eating it, that would be so um, almost offensive to me yeah. because they're not present with the food. So my husband and I turn on the music, you know, we always have something playing in the background. Usually it's some, you know, jazz or, you know, mm -hmm. something like that, just soothing music. And because I work from home and he's retired, we're, we're together most of the time. So we don't always have a conversation about something. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, we we're, we're in the house together all day, but we want to be still present with our food and he appreciates that I make a meal every night. And so I think that's really important. And I think that the whole um, body system, like you said, I don't know, again, I don't know that people make the connection between the brain and the emotions and the what's going on up here. And let's say your stomach acid, <laughs> you know, Yeah. Uh, but if you tell people, have you ever heard of anybody getting a stress ulcer? And they're like, Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, where'd the stress come from? <laughs> yeah. You know? So the connection between the brain and the digestive system is a huge, huge pathway. And then further on down, of course, you get into the small intestine. And like you said, you've got bile being produced from the gallbladder and enzymes from the pancreas and all these things are happening. But it starts with the chewing, um, breaking down, like you said, in the, in the saliva and in the, in the amylase in the, you know, breaking down those carbohydrates and then getting in the stomach. And you talked about breaking down the protein in the stomach, which is really broken down in the stomach. And that goes back to the immune system. And again, I don't, th this is where we love to educate people because I don't think they really understand how important protein is for their immune system mm -hmm. and getting those amino acids broken apart in the stomach so the body can utilize them. 
So tell, tell the audience a little bit about how important it is that their protein get broken down in their stomach properly for their immune system. Cause we're heading into the fall months again and mm -hmm. cold and flu season and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So share a little bit about how important protein is for the immune system. Because uh, amino acids are basically building blocks, uh, building blocks. You need amino acids, uh, sometimes certain types of cholesterol. Think about that. And uh, so cells need needs some material to be built and uh, maintained because they're constantly recycling most of the time. Uh, but if you don't have those small little bricks, you can not build the house properly because think about it, you have some big uh, unevenly shaped pieces of concrete. So now you have to somehow uh, assemble those. That's very difficult. It's not efficient. You need to have those little ones, small ones. But how to get those? Basically, you, you have to, uh, it's again, starting with stomach acid. Uh, do you know that, uh, I'll share something with you. You maybe know, maybe not. I didn't know this for, uh, I just recently learned this, maybe last year. Stomach acid in humans is even stronger than in lions, carnivores, wolves. Wow, it's strong I like in the vultures, like basically, how do you call that? Scavengers. Yeah. Why? Because wow. you know you need to break down those proteins properly because they're yeah. breaking down in. The, so that's amazing. That was amazing. And uh, but what's going on now? Uh, Unproper food combinations. Uh, again, watching something, being completely distracted from what you're eating, and uh, this <laughs> over prescriptions of antacids. So <laughs> you are completely, I will use this word because um, I think it should be appropriate. You're screwing up your digestion from big, yeah. <laughs> big time, <laughs> like a big time. Yeah. And then we're talking now about those uh, small little. Uh, beautiful immune complex immune system um, that is has no chance because what are you providing you know how you can provide those cells to be rebuilt to repair them, and uh, oh my god that's so complex we don't know much we don't know everything as you can as you know but like uh, keep it simple okay what you eat is important but <laughs> how you eat is as well um, important and it shouldn't be. I, I believe it's not so difficult. Just keep it simple. Turn off. Uh, appreciate what you eat. Your mind's going to run all the time. You just go back again. You know, everybody talk about, you know, uh, spirituality. Just listen. listen. Great. <laughs> Connect yourself with the plate every day. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You're going to elevate yourself spiritually a lot. Well, and you know, a lot of, like we do in our home, we, we are, we say grace, we, we are thankful. We're thanking the creator for the food that we yeah, have. Before. That's great. We do that before every meal. And I'll do that even when I'm out in a restaurant or something I'll we'll nice. stop and do it. Um, and what I'm, what I'm loving is I have grandchildren and I have great grandchildren now. Oh. Um, and we, yes. And we just had the, they, we had them all in the house last weekend for Labor Day weekend. And we had, we had meals together and we hold hands and those little kids, a little four-year-old is so precious because she wants to say thank, she wants to say grace. And so I feel like we're teaching them early. First of all, we're giving thanks for the food that's here. And then we're eating at the table together with no devices on and no TV on or anything. Mm -hmm. We're having a conversation with three generations, which is very rare anymore. It just doesn't happen. And to me, it is an incredible blessing. I, I just feel every time we have a meal together and I, and I get to prepare a meal for my family like that, it's like, you know, I believe this is the way it used to be. Um, you yeah. know, and we've lost this. We've really lost this in the in the busyness and the, and the computers and the iPads and the cell phones and um, the in the car and eating at your desk at work. This is something a lot of my clients I talk to them about like, yes. you, you get a lunch break. They pay you to go to have lunch somewhere. Yeah leave <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. get yeah, out of always... that office right um, or don't eat or, or, yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah or, fast i'm serious like it's better yeah. not to eat yeah it's better or, not to eat 
yeah, yeah. one more thing i will add uh, I mean, first this is amazing that you have uh, your whole family and that little four year old uh, grandkids is yeah. going to learn this from you and that's that's all the uh, that's the point of family and uh, union um yes yes uh, one more thing one simple advice as well for 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 our cl- your clients and people that work eat when you're hungry yeah cuz i talk to my clients and they say you know i uh, i uh, eat and so, are you hungry in that time no okay and then I tell them, you know, it, if it's noon, if it's lunchtime, if you're not hungry, don't eat. So, uh, again, depends. Some people are hungry in the morning, you know. So that would be where one very simple, I would say, longevity uh, hack strategy. Uh, eat when you're hungry. But, like, you really want to feel that emptiness. You don't want to listen to this. I'm hungry at 10 p.m. because, you know... Uh, my wife uh, said something wrong today. Oh, good point. <laughs> you know, like, or I uh, didn't get promotion at work or whatever happened, you know. So uh, you you don't want to listen to that. So really like, well, am I hungry? This is very easy to, to, to figure out. I'm hungry. Your stomach is empty and you feel that. Oh, man, I'm hungry. So eat then. <laughs> That's a really so, good point because I think, you know, like you said, let's say at lunch, you know, at work, this is lunchtime, 12 to 1, you know, you go eat. Yeah. What if, what if you're not hungry? Or what if you're stressed out? Like, you're really stressed out. That's not mm-hmm. a good time to eat. Mm-hmm. So Not at uh, all, yeah. One, one of the things during our 28-day program, we we encourage people to do a 24-hour fast. And yep. we start them off, you know, a lot of people aren't familiar with intermittent fasting yes. or time-restricted eating. So we start them off with that in the first three weeks. And we you know, try to get them used to not eating all the time. And I think you're, you're right about that. We have gotten so used to, I have a client right now that I'm working with that she's addicted to eating. I mean, she's just addicted Mm -hmm. to, she's afraid to get up in the morning and go 30 minutes before Mm -hmm. she will eat. So -hmm. we're just working on that first 30 minutes, like get up, have a little lemon juice and some water and wait 30 minutes because she is so used to getting up and eating right away. So I think this is, that's a really good point. Uh, Dolly, I really, I think that's a really big point. There is don't eat. What does hunger feel like? I don't know that we a lot of times know what hunger feels like, mm-hmm. but it's a good thing to experience. I think it's okay. It actually passes. You don't have to eat. <laughs> you can go without eating. It's fine. Oh yeah, we, yeah. Uh, most of us have enough. have enough. Oh yeah, yeah. more. Yeah, we, than, so don't worry we have enough reserves it. to make it no problem. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> we have a we have a couple minutes left. This has been a okay. great conversation. I think um, here. So here's what I want you to do for our audience. I want you to challenge them with something for this week, right? From for for this week, from Thursday through next Thursday, give them a challenge, what they can incorporate into their life for the next week. Okay, so uh, a great one. Very keep it very simple. You have family. Uh, plan one meal together either in the morning or in the evening if you of course it's difficult during the day so just explain your family first nicely what are we gonna do now we're gonna turn off we won't use this and uh, let's sit and eat and you know it depends how big your kids are uh, they might not understand because if they eat and they watching something for a few years it's addictive it's not easy always to switch but explain them nicely. Okay, we're going to adopt something else because it's it's better for us. And uh, do it for seven days. Yeah, yeah. If that you're alone, if you live alone, and uh, same thing. All right. Yeah. I'm going to eat this. I will appreciate this and uh, see how you feel. Do you feel fullness? I'm full, but I can run. I can play. I can do whatever I want. Or you are bloated. You want to take a nap after a meal. That's not good. That's a very simple sign that you are having digestive issues. So I believe this is a simple uh, challenge. And then see yeah. how it's going to work for you. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. I think that's beautiful. Uh, I think that if you have, especially if you have a family, I mean, you do have to talk to those teenage kids and they may not yeah. like it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course still they in won't your like it. They're eating your food, right? So you get to say. 
<laughs> well, this has been wonderful. And um, I want to remind everyone of your website. So point point up to your website there on your so, name. So uh, very simple. It's uh, aculosophy.com. Uh, we are located in uh, Toronto. Uh, we have uh, one of the biggest clinic here in the area. And uh, we are using very, very simple. We're using Chinese medicine and uh, nutrition to help people to uh, achieve their goals. Um yeah, so they can contact us there if they have any questions. Yeah, and your wife does some virtual work. Yes, and... as well. Yeah, Nata is is having her uh, virtual business as well, and uh, but they can contact us through this uh, email, and then uh, we can start from there. Awesome, wonderful. Yeah. Well, we we just thank you so much for joining us today. This has been delightful, and um, blessings over you and your family. And we will have you back. I think this could be we could go down all kinds of different rabbit holes. Okay, uh, really I fun. like to talk about this a lot. So <laughs> yes, and the very good topic and very very important. I really believe it is important. Uh, as you work with clients and I work with clients, this is a big issue. Um, yeah, getting people to slow down long enough to eat exactly and process and your food. <laughs> if our uh, if our uh, clients uh, have some questions, they can always we can uh, open some new topics for them if they're interested. So yeah, we can we can do like that. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us, and this is Divine Farmer Health Podcast, and we're going to be signing off. And you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.